I, I worked for NASA for almost 30 years and I just retired from NASA and started teaching or started uh, as a faculty member at, at a university in Florida in the United States. So my job for 30 years at NASA, the first 10 years I worked on the space shuttle and I was testing it and troubleshooting when things were broken, keeping it flying. The next seven years I worked on the International Space Station, helping to put together the communication systems on that and testing it and getting it ready for launch. Then since that time, for the last 12 years, I worked in the te technology development lab and I co-founded a laboratory known as the Kennedy Space Center Swamp Works. The Swamp Works is the lead organization in NASA for developing mining in space. So if you want to do mining or um, and also manufacturing in space, uh, if you want to use the resources of space, then you need to start out by mining, uh, extracting the resources from the environment, then you have to process, and then you can do manufacturing with those materials. It's really important that we start using resources in space because launching is too expensive. If you launch water into space, the cost of putting a, a, an ounce of water in space is more than the cost of buying an ounce of gold. So we have a saying that an ounce of water in space is worth more than an ounce of gold. If you want water in space, you have to pay the, the price of gold to get it. And we need water in space. We use uh, water for actually rocket propellant. When you uh, use electrolysis to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen, that is your rocket propellant. And when you burn the fuel, the, the hydrogen and the oxygen in your rocket engine, it makes water again. So we need lots of rocket propellant if we wanna do things in space. We also use water for radiation shielding. Here on the Earth, we're protected from radiation by the Earth's magnetic field and by the thick atmosphere of the Earth. But if in space, we don't have that, and so we want to put more radiation shielding around the spacecraft, water is the best radiation shield. So there are some reasons why we want water in space. And fortunately, we know there are a lot of places where we can get water in space. The moon has water deposits at the North and South Pole. And there's enough water that if we turned it into rocket propellant, you could launch the space shuttle every day for 1,000 years. That's how much water is at the poles of the moon. Also, there are asteroids. And a lot of the asteroids are, are as much as 20% water by weight. And so if we can just capture these small asteroids, then we can get the water out. We think that this is the right approach to helping humanity get beyond just having one planet. If we start using the water in space, start manufacturing fuel, then the next step is to start extracting metal. We can make metal out of the lunar soil or we can get metal out of asteroids. And once we can start making metal, then we can make spacecraft in space without launching them. We can also make solar cells so that we can get the energy from the sun and convert it to electricity. We have some ideas about how to make solar cells out of, excuse me, out of lunar soil. So these are some examples of how we want to use the resources in space. And uh, I was involved in a test a few years ago where we were taking oxygen out of soil. Uh, most rocks are 50% oxygen by weight. If you, if you hold a rock in your hand, like this is a, a meteorite that came from North Africa, um, this, this is actually half oxygen by weight. Every rock, if you go um, walk on the sand, the sand is 50% oxygen. And so uh, if you can just get the oxygen out of the rock, the studies tell us that we can cut the cost of doing missions to Mars by about one third, cut, cut it down to a third of the cost. 
or make it even one fifth of the cost just by getting the oxygen out of the rocks. So um, if we uh, if we uh, so we built some technology to get the oxygen out of rocks, and we took this technology up to a, a volcano in Hawaii. We had robots that were driving around digging up the soil, and they were they were dumping this volcanic ash into a chemical processor. The chemical processor was then using sunlight for energy to melt the volcanic ash, and it was using a um, chemical process to get oxygen out. And then we were liquefying the oxygen, uh, making it very cold down to liquid state. And then we used the liquid oxygen to fire a rocket thruster. So the test went from volcanic dust to rocket thrust, and we called the test dust to thrust. So we did that in Hawaii a few years ago, and it was all very, very good. It all worked well. And we demonstrated that we can do these things in space. So we think that if we get started doing these things, then the next step is to start manufacturing in space. And then we can make the cost of spaceflight far less. And that will enable us to start doing more things in space. Um, so that's what I'm working on. That's the, the area of technology that I've been developing, both at NASA and now as a faculty member at the university. My personal opinion is that this should be our number one goal in space. We should try to start industry on the moon and using asteroids that are close to the Earth. I think that's more important than going to Mars right now. That's my personal opinion. And I think that once we do this, once we develop these technologies on the moon, then it will make it far easier to go to Mars. Then we'll be able to afford doing missions to Mars. Uh, I, I wrote a paper uh, a couple of years ago um, talking about how to start industry on the moon and how we can make, uh, make it more advanced so that every year our technologies on the moon become more advanced until eventually we can, we can have robots that build robots on the moon using entirely space resources, entirely resources that were obtained on the moon. And if we do this, then this industry that we put in space can double itself and then double itself again. And then we can send the, the robots to the main asteroid belt where the industry can grow very large. And once we get this very large industry on the moon, then it can start to build power generators in space that can beam the energy back down to the earth. And so this is a way that we can start bringing resources back down to the earth to improve life on the earth. And by doing this, we can eventually, uh, we can eventually solve all of the poverty problems that we have on the earth. We can help the entire world get the benefits of a very high standard of living and we can um, we can stop polluting the earth, stop using st stop using energy sources that pol pollution into the atmosphere, and uh, and so I wrote this paper and published it, and the the White House, the office of the president in the United States, actually read my paper, and they they started contacting me and asking me questions about it, and so they started this new initiative that they're calling massless exploration, exploring space without launching any mass off of the Earth. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, I think that it holds the potential to revolutionize civilization here on the Earth so that we can take civilization to a much higher level. Um, so that, that's a, an overview about what I'm doing. And um, Ajit, did you want me to answer questions? Uh, yes, yes, my friend. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was fantastic information. Just, if you just give me a five minutes to just translate the, the topics of what you say to Kurdish language, because what you say is something very strange we have never heard about, using the volcano ashes or, go or using the water okay. of the moon. Just give me a little break. I'm going to just uh, tell the guys what, ha what you've done. <laughs> uh, okay. Laman, uh,
Okay, doctor, uh, my friend Philip, let's say, uh, as you said yesterday, don't say doctor, I said, <laughs> I've got to respect you, so I, 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 can't, I can't say uh, Philip like that. My dear friend, uh, now uh, we are open the gate of questions, so if you're ready, we have questions uh, for you, uh, and we appreciate if you have uh, your answers for it. Uh, Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm so happy to speak with you all. But I'm speaking for this. Philip, she said, uh, as she read about that, the, the beginning of creation of the moon, she said that the rotation around the one rotation around Earth was taken only eight hours. Uh, I don't know. Is that you, probably you know more than us? Uh, is that true? Is that happened in the beginning of the moon? It's rotating very quick around uh, Earth. I have. I. I don't remember. I learned about that many years ago when I was in graduate school. But yes, the Earth. The, the moon is moving further away from the Earth, and the reason it moves further away from the Earth. Do you want me to just say a little bit? And then you can translate, and then I'll say a little more. Aji? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the the Earth is elongated by the moon. It's the um, here. I will do this. Let's say this is the Earth, <laughs> the Earth and the moon, and the um, the moon pulls on the Earth, and it makes it elongated. It makes it longer like that. But the Earth is turning. And so the long part is turning away from the moon. Yes. So, um, so it's like it's like this. It's turning, and so the long part is pulling. The gravity is pulling the moon, and it's pulling it, and it makes the moon go faster and faster around the Earth. 
And so as the moon goes faster, it gets farther and farther away. And so this has been happening for a long time. And so the moon has been getting farther away. Now, it is, it is ironic that when you go faster in orbit, it actually takes longer to go around because although you are going faster, you're also farther out. And so the distance is more. So you're going faster and faster, but it takes longer and longer. So although the moon is going a lot faster now than it used to, it takes an entire month for it to go around the earth now. Uh, she asked, uh, absolutely, there is no um, any uh, connection between what happened to the moon and, uh, and human. Uh, it's something natural happened to the moon, not uh, uh, artificial or the effect of human on the moon or something like that. It's, that, it's naturally happened. Oh, no. It's naturally, that is correct. It's a natural effect that the moon is getting farther from the earth. Okay, you can sit. Thank you. Uh, she's asking about the earth uh, moon quakes. What about moon quakes? So the moon does have moon quakes like the earth does as well. There are, there are several types of moon quakes. There are moon quakes that happen deep inside the moon, down, uh, down inside the mantle of the moon. Then there are other moon quakes that happen up in the crust of the moon because the moon takes an entire month to turn around. So the moon's, half the moon is in the sunlight for about 14 days, and then it's in pure darkness for 14 days. So it gets very hot and then it gets very cold. And so what, when it is hot, it expands and creates a lot of stress in the surface of the moon. And then when it cools, it contracts. And so this expanding and contracting cr creates moon quakes. <laughs> Is she asking about the, the water on the moon, on the surface? She asked why there is no water on the surface of the moon. Uh, she said, is there any signs for fine water uh, above on the surface of the moon? Yes, okay, that is, that is a very good question. And let me also say the previous questions were also very good questions. So the, um, the moon has no atmosphere. The moon is too small to have an atmosphere. There's not enough gravity to keep the air on the moon. So the moon is, is very pure vacuum. And at vacuum, water boils. So even at cold temperature, water in vacuum will boil. And so any water on the moon would instantly boil and then the water vapor would go to space. It would escape the low gravity and go into space. But there is some water that is frozen as ice on the moon. And the reason it is uh, still on the moon is because the, um, every once in a while, a comet will hit the moon. And when the, can you hear me? Yes. Generator, and I'm 
Okay. Do you want me to keep going? You know the situation in Iraq. Nothing is moving perfectly. Should I keep keep uh, talking? Yes, but uh, they can't he uh, hear you very well, and they also the photo and image is lost. The video lost. Oh, I see. I can still see you though. Yes, it's a, a webcam of the. Uh, or the laptop. I see. Uh, give me a, there's a good chance to translate what you said right now about the, the, the atmosphere of moon. Dr. Philip Dale, the very mind, but the Hawaii is Zor 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 Tamshiba, and it's a Takuda Hisabi Bona here, where Nabuni Berge Hawaika, Kapastan Nabu, Kapastani Hawa Nabu, Kijanian, Ao. Water and some man, but she wish he not in the Zor Zor Zahmata. While we hash bitten, Yanda bit a soul, Yamba Halam, that the two Gawat Mubu Shai Asma. Oh, I could work a man, any net to any Bergahawashi, Kasfi, Kasba, I should be Kalasaro, which got a sassy boon, I should the Hashwinik, this get a play Gerichi, Kapastani Hawa, and air treasure. Air treasure, Nabi, Zor Zor Zahmata. Zor Zor Zahmata. Okay, probably we can. Can use time, so ask the question. Okay, uh, let me. Um, I, I was going to explain about ice on the moon, though. Yeah. So, sometimes a comet will hit the moon. Many of the craters that you see on the moon are from comets, and when a comet hits the moon, the comet vaporizes and it creates an atmosphere on the moon. Oh, and yes. the the atmosphere. The atmosphere on the moon does not survive very long. Most of the atmosphere will escape into space, but about one tenth of that atmosphere will freeze into the poles of the moon. And so over time, it has collected and created this water ice at the poles of the moon. And it is so cold that even though it's in vacuum, the water does not sublimate, it stays solid ice. Electricity coming back. Everything is okay now, my friend. <laughs> okay, uh, Doctor Philip. Uh, my friend, okay, uh, thank you very much. Another question from... Hello. Hi, my name is Farhad, uh, but I'm speaking Kurdish. Uh, uh, very much. According to his uh, question, he is briefly said, uh, is there a chance to live on the moon after we ho heard all of that, especially water, using the water? Yes. We, we human beings need to have atmosphere, we need to have water, and we also need to have a food chain. We need to have other animals, other life. We cannot live without other life. But unfortunately, there is no liquid water or atmosphere on the moon. And there is no food chain. There is no other life on the moon. And so it is not a good place for, for humans to live. However, we have been inventing technologies that can do those things for us now. We can create an atmosphere and we can, we can mine the water on the moon and melt it. So we can create little bubbles where we have atmosphere and where we can live. But how do we get food on the moon? There's no other life on the moon. Well, again, because we have invented robotics, we have invented technologies, these robots can take the resources on the moon, they can take the soil and the sunlight and the ice, and we can make it into food. 
we can make everything that we need. So these robots can do the same things that plants and other life do here on the earth in order to create an environment where humans can live. So it is now possible. We have not actually developed most of these technologies, but we know how to. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Philip Dele, Bebe, Yan Boracani di Cababesh, the Canadi Cash, the Can Titao Navan. Bele and Pista Boica, Moko Obasiker, well, Bracata Umlas Nai Uena Gitana. I will take Eastern Bele, the Cree, a Masood, the Hamu resource, the Canister Mango Begin. But I bet you out, Kawaki, and the Pule, and Obasi the Ka and H2O, and our Chisaf of the Twine Bohim Warrick Vacarini. تحقیقاتی که ارائه است ساده دو تاین اکسیژن و هیدروژن دیگر زیاد کنن و با کاریم بینی با هر دو باریم با چند بار که ام پیوست ما پیدا کرده جانی کنم. پسیار، کوچن. Hi, my name is Sunduz. My question is about moon. We know moon round faster and faster, and the sun has magnetic field. Is the sun factor of that a graph? of the moon or not? Is the sun gravity of moon? Um, I'm sorry, I did not understand. You were talking very fast. She said, is there an impact of uh, solar activity? Uh -huh. she, uh, she asked, uh, is there a, a probability that uh, sun pulling the moon with, with this gravity, uh, because the, 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 the gravity of, of sun is, you know, it's very, very larger than the moon. So is, it ch is there a chance to, or probability that sun will gradually grabbing the moon f for, for, its, for, uh, for its surface in the future? Um, no, it's not really possible. It's not possible because the, uh, Although the sun has much higher gravity than the earth does, we are very, very far from the sun. And so the moon is actually very close to the earth. And so even though the earth has smaller gravity, because it is so much closer to the earth, it feels a lot stronger for the moon. So the, uh, the strong, the, the um, I don't know a good way to say this, the um, gravity, is uh, according to Newton's law of gravity, gravity gets weaker like one over the distance squared. And so uh, because we're so far from the sun, it's actually a very weak gravity at this distance. Right. Um, my friend Ajit, does that explain it? Yes, yes, you thank think? you very much. Yes, yes. Uh, my friend, we've got to ask him, quickly and answer also quickly because we have only probably 20 minutes before our friend uh, Robert coming. So, by the speaking, Pasiar. Yeah, another student here. But I will share with him that Clavius Crater Chip. Hi, Dr. Phil. Uh, my Hello. name is Palin. Uh, I want to say thank you so much uh, for this, about this information. And I'm studying in uh, Fatima Megas School. I have a question, I have two questions for you, okay? Question number one is, has Paramecium lived in the moon? Or Amoeba lived in the moon? Or another? And question number two is, is there fire or volcanoes in the moon? If you say yes, so does it mean the presence of O2, oxygen? Um, I missed a couple of words. I, could you help me understand? There were a few words I did not understand. Oh, okay. Can I, can I okay, okay, yeah. Okay. He asked, he's actually about the moon. Is there a... Oh, what? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bacteria or some. Ah, ah. Amoeba, I, I see. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, 
we do not know of any life on the moon. We do not know of any bacteria or paramecium or any other life. As far as we can tell, the moon is too harsh of an environment for even microbial life. Okay, yeah. I, uh, I have a question. How long does daylight last on the moon? It is about 14 days, 14 and a half days. It's, it's half of a month because a month is how long the moon goes around the earth and the moon uh, is always facing the same towards the earth. And so therefore it takes a month for the different sides of the moon to face the sun as well. And my last question is for you. I know so, so you have time. To okay, you thank time. you so Thank you very much. <laughs> We've got to, uh, okay. Uh, yes, this one, this, this question is, I think it's a very nice one because she asked you and I'm thinking you should know. Introduce yourself. Um, I'm Fatima and I am 14 years old. The South Pole Aitken Basin, which is the deepest crater on the solar system and the oldest on the moon, what is the impact that caused this crater, uh, slow or fast moving? And why is the chemistry of the impact basin so different from the highlands? Ah, very good question. Well, every, uh, I, do, I do not know how fast the impact was on the moon, but in general, every impact on the moon has to go at least 2.7 kilometers per second, because that is the escape velocity of the moon. And so gravity always pulls everything in to go at least that fast when it hits the moon. Uh, some impacts on the moon can be much faster than that, but that is the minimum. Every, every impact on the moon has to be at least 2.7 kilometers per second. So it's very, very fast. Now, why is the chemistry different it's because the impact was so big and so deep that it dug all the way down into the mantle of the moon. So the moon is what we call a differentiated body. When it, it, when it formed, it was so big and it got so hot that all the metal melted and went down to the center and the rocks floated up to the surface. And the in-between part is the mantle. And so the impact that formed the South Pole Aitken Basin was so deep that it went all the way through the crust, all the way into the mantle, down into the rocks that have a lot of iron in them, down into rocks that are called olivine. Thank you very much. Hi, I am Anas. I am in grade 10. I have two question about my... <laughs> yeah, no uh, What are the factors uh, for having uh, water uh, on the Mars? Uh, is the possibility to have the same uh, factors that led uh, to have water uh, on Mars again? Mars used to have a much thicker atmosphere than it does now. Over a long amount of time, much of the atmosphere has escaped into space because Mars does not have enough gravity to keep it as well as the Earth does. So the atmosphere has become very thin on Mars. The density of the atmosphere is only 1% of the density of the atmosphere on the Earth. And therefore, liquid water is not possible on Mars at the present time. Liquid water would boil away into vapor almost immediately. So it's possible that the, well, we do know for sure that the atmosphere was thicker in the past on Mars. And so it was possible that in the past there was liquid water on the surface. But there's still a lot that we need to learn about Mars. We still don't know for sure if Mars had an ocean at one time. We don't know if the water on the surface of Mars lasted for a long time 
or if it only lasted for a brief time, we don't know. crashing with another moon or planet. I don't know if you... And, uh, I'm sure Dr. Phillips, she, she said uh, about the moon. If a moon uh, get far away for three, three centimeters, suddenly or gradually? Uh, gradually. Is that leave an impact on Earth? For example, she, th th the question is suddenly or, or quickly? Does that leave impact on Earth? If the if the moon suddenly moved three yes. centimeters? Yeah, for example. Well, the moon moves about that far every year. Uh, it moves a couple of centimeters every year uh, farther away from the Earth. If it happened suddenly, um, I don't think it would cause a big effect. Uh, I think that gradually, over a long, long time, the moon moving away from the earth will have a an effect on the moon on, on the earth it changes the tides here on the earth the the month is getting longer as the moon moves farther away and so the tides on the earth will slow down and will change also the gravity of the moon is making the rotation of the earth slow down so days on the earth are getting longer and uh so those are long-term effects, though, many, many millions of years for those to have much effect. I don't think there would, there would be a very immediate effect. gets too close to the earth to the uh, to the point that you feel it is going to fall of the earth what is the reason behind that and what are the uh, consonant of that uh, i'm sorry could you say one more time please Ah, oh, I, I think that is an optical illusion. I think when the moon is close to the horizon, sometimes it looks larger. But in reality, the moon is, uh, is always at the same distance from the Earth and only very, very slowly getting farther away from the Earth. It's an imperceptible amount of change. But um, because of the optical illusion when it is close to the horizon, low to the ground, it looks like it's low to the ground, the moon sometimes looks a lot bigger. I, and I think it's because the way the atmosphere, um, there's the, sometimes the moon will look squashed because of the atmosphere refracting the light. But I think it's mostly just a, um, an illusion because our minds will interpret the way we see it when it is close to the ground. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my friend, uh, we have a call from Robert Zobrin right now. And I'm going to answer, uh, answer the call. Uh, we've got to wait a little bit, Dr. F Dr. Robert. Uh, Dr. Phil, thank you very much. That was a great opportunity for us, and I'm sure the guys here and every people will stand here. Uh, how did you see the questions of the, of the students? How did you find that? Those were wonderful questions. I can see they have spent a lot of time 
thinking about space and learning about, about gravity and about the moon. So thank you for the wonderful questions. Thank you very much. Please give a big clap for... Thank you very much, Doctor. It was really my pleasure, that. friend. Thank you very I much. I hope we can do this again someday. We, 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 we try our best to do that again. Thank you very, very much. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye bye. My point is that uh, if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, everyone who is involved in the space program, um, everyone who uh, became a well-known scientist uh, um, in any field, um, an inventor, or any of these things that you might want to do, uh, at one point was in your position of just being a student in school, um, you know, and uh, thinking about it as, as a dream. Uh, so there it is, and uh, life is what you make of it. Now, I am, um, the reason why I really uh, like being involved in the space uh, exploration and well, in particular, in the development of technology for space exploration, which is what I do, um, is because I think this is the most important thing that is going on. Uh, I think that when people 500 years ago, or 500 years from now, look back at this time, this is what they will consider important. Um, now, I know this, this may be uh, difficult because in Kurdistan right now, you are involved in a life and death struggle with um, an immediate uh, evil force, uh, and you have to take care of what is going on now. Um, but nevertheless, um, um, you know, we fight today so that our children can be scientists and their children can be artists. Um, the, uh, you know, that's what we do. Um, and I think that our time will be remembered because this is when we first set sail for other worlds. Right. You know, um, human beings, you think of humans as native to the earth, but really human beings are only native to a small part of the earth, which is to say Kenya. That is where the first humans were um, in the Kenyan Rift Valley. And we're actually um, adapted for that environment. We, we are actually tropical animals. That's why we have these long, thin arms with no fur on them. We uh, only became global, uh, a global species by developing technologies that allowed us to live in, in new places. I live in Colorado, where um, the winters are very cold, and, uh, but otherwise it's quite a pleasant place to live. But no human without a certain amount of technology could live here. Not, no human could survive a single winter night here without fire, without clothing, without houses. Uh, these are technologies, these are things that people invented that allowed them to become a global species and live all over the earth. Um, well, similarly right now, uh, there are other planets and we do not yet have the technologies that allow, could allow us to live there. We're close to developing them. But when we do develop those technologies, humans will go from a global species to an interplanetary species, and someday an interstellar species, with the universe open to us. And uh, I mean, imagine how limited the human experience would be today if we had just stayed in the Canyon Rift Valley, a few tribes living there. Uh, instead, we are all over the globe, hundreds of nations, different cultures, different literatures. Um, well, if we go into space, if we establish the first human foothold on Mars in our time, then 500 years from now, there will be humans living on hundreds of planets orbiting stars in this region of the galaxy. A, 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 a much vaster human civilization and experience than anything that we can imagine today. And Mars is the first step, in my view, 
because Mars is the closest planet that has on it all the resources needed to support life and therefore technological civilization. Um, so uh, the moon is closer, obviously, but the moon doesn't have a significant amount of water, it doesn't have carbon, it doesn't have nitrogen. Uh, these are fundamental to life. Uh, Mars is a 24-hour day, very similar to the Earth. The moon is two weeks of light, two weeks of dark. Um, uh, the, Mars has had a complex geological history necessary for creating mineral ore. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, so Mars is a place we could settle. If, if we were to compare the, the, the current age of exploration to uh, the explore, age of exploration that Europeans uh, began in a big way about 500 years ago, the time of Columbus and Magellan and, and so on. Um, Mars compares to the moon as North America compared to Greenland. You know, Europeans made it to Greenland first, Greenland is closer to Europe, but they couldn't develop a civilization there. It was too poor an environment. Yes. Um, a few settlements, yes, but not a civilization. So Mars is the grand prize of this first act of the, the new space age. Right. Right. And that's why I think we should set our sights on Mars. Uh, doc, doc, and so, oh, sorry. with that, I'll take questions. Uh, doctor, thank you very much. So, I, if you just give me a little uh, a break to translate that the topics of what you said about uh, the important informations for the student. Just give me two or three minutes, please. All right, sounds good. Okay. طبعا دكتور باسيوي كدلي ما نتجاوز يجي غزال زوري للمسار المريق طبعا هو بداية باسي جاني خوي قلت من الفين صالي هو زور حزن لبوالي فلك ناس قلت او كاتي يجيتي السور بيتي او انا هبو امن كاتي خوي لبس احتمام بعلي فلك ناس كنا ترسام لو يجيتي السور بيتي ده ترسام شو انا زد يجب من المريق هاي لو كات خوي مده ترسام لو او ترسوي كده مسمنا وعمل فلك احتمام يبدا يعني لو خوش ينوه بكري ما زوسي <تصفيق> دلیل صد سالی دی تندان شهرستانی لحسار کنی دیگه مرد یعنی بلی مرد دیگه ات مرد دفعه شهرستانی دیگه است حساری دیگه دوست داره نه تنها در این سال سیستم سیستم میخواد بلکه لذت روی سیستم میخواد یعنی مثلا صوری میاد بین صد سالی دی مرد هر جایی یک زار یک زار زود جورت دنیا رو یکی استایل چه او مثلا صوری میاد تکنولوژی استایل بدیعتی که و زور خیرات تطور دکه. Okay, our dear guest, Dr. Robert, thank you very very much for this information and. Uh, about uh, your life uh, in the beginning of the astronomy. Uh, so, uh, we open the door, gate of questions. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you. I want to take a second. I want to take a second. I want to take a second. I want to introduce yourself. <coughs> Hi. Hi, my name is Dan. Uh, I, before my questions, I want to thank you that you gave your time to uh, share uh, for sharing information, and I want to thank you. I really appreciate it and it's an honor for us to talk uh, to uh, such a, a, a smart scientist in uh, space explorations. And my question is that uh, I know that you have a Mars Society and you have a project to uh, send uh, humans to leave on Mars. And I want to know: uh, Have you located the loca uh, have you located the location that a human could live on Mars? And what's the time for that journey? And do you think that human is ready for uh, a such journey on Mars? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Robert. I think okay. Uh, um. Well, these are uh, several good questions there. Uh, there. Uh, there's a wide variety of places on Mars that we might go. Um, I would tend to go towards uh, the equator because Mars is a cold planet, and so we'd want to go to the, the warmest part of it. And in particular, um, the we would not want to go not to live at the poles. We could go to visit 
because at the poles on Mars, half the year it's dark and you have no light at all. And the Martian year is twice as long as the Earth year, so that would not be good. The poles are interesting in that there's uh, water ice there. Um, and, uh, but I would go to tropical or at most mid latitudes and I'd go to low altitude. You want to translate that part and I'll take another section? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, excuse me, I, I, he had more questions than just that, yes. uh, so I'm going to try to yeah. answer at least a few more of them. Sure. Um, I think uh, that if there was a serious decision to do it, we can have humans on Mars in 10 years. It doesn't take years, 10 years to travel to Mars. It would take about six months to travel to Mars. Uh, but it would take 10 years to uh, develop the technology, the, the, the rockets, the spacecraft, and so forth. And um, okay. so now I'll take another question. OK. After thank, you. thank you very much. Thanks. So from the 10 years, will things uh, get very developed in the next 10 years? Yeah, well, they can. Um, the, uh, I mean, look, it took us 10 years from Kennedy's speech to landing on the moon. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And uh, actually, even though Mars is much further, our technology today is much more advanced. And so uh, I uh, think it could be, we could be there in 10 years if we decided to do it. Now, right now, there isn't a decision to do it, um, but it could be done. Uh, there's also... Uh, a private company called SpaceX, which is developing technology on its own, um, that I could uh, get people to watch. Great. Great. Please. Yeah, another question. I have a question. I have uh, my friend asked you about the color of Mars. He said, why Mars is reddish like that? Uh, and, and the gravity of Mars. Uh -huh. It's the, the difference between Mars and Moon, uh, Earth, uh, from the gravity. Okay, um, Mars is red because of rust. Um, that is, um, Iron oxide, when uh, iron combines with oxygen, it forms uh, rust, like you see rusty metal. That's uh, Mars's uh, soil is very rich in iron, and so it is red. Um, and um, that's the first thing. And the gravity of Mars is about one third that of uh, the Earth. So, for instance, if you weighed 60 kilograms on Earth, you would weigh 20 kilograms on Mars. Great. So you don't have to lose your weight. You want to lose your weight, you got to go to Mars. It's going to be better for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Another question, please. Hello, Dr. Robert. My name is Mohammed, and here's my question. Can we increase the amount of oxygen on Mars and help? Okay. Um, the, um, Mars, uh, today, its atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Uh, so, uh, initially people who go to Mars will need to live inside of their spacecraft that they land on Mars. But it is possible that someday humans could make Mars to be a planet much more like the Earth. That is called, uh, terraforming, they call it. And... The way we would do it is first we would warm the planet by putting uh, artificial greenhouse gases in its atmosphere, and then uh, like fluorocarbons. And then as the planet warms, uh, its current atmosphere, which is CO2, will thicken because CO2 when, when is sponged into the soil and when it is warmed, it comes out. And then once that happens, and also a lot of the water that is frozen in the soil as permafrost will melt and you'll get liquid water and rain, and then we can spread plants around the planet. 
and the plants turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. And so uh, Mars is red today, but someday it will be green. That's an advanced question. Uh, she said, uh, as we know, the Phobos is getting closer, closer to Mars, and, and you know there's a there's an, an, an uh, chance to an impact between Mars and Phobos to the surface of Mars. She said, uh, is is that good that if you build a, a colonizing Mars and there is a threat on Mars, or this is happening after a very long time for, from now, the impact between Phobos and the surface of Mars. Um, it will have take a long time. It, it will be bu billions of years from now. Billion of years. Hello, my name is Hannah. Uh, Hannah asks you, is there uh, four seasons on Mars, Dr. Robert? Yes, there are. Uh, Mars, um, just like the Earth, has an axis uh, and it rotates around and it's tilted about as much as the Earth's axis is, so that as Mars goes around uh, the sun, it has four seasons. It's just that each season is twice as long as the Earth season. Um, in other words, the Martian year is actually 23 of our months long, just a little bit short of uh, two of our years. And so each of its seasons, instead of lasting three months, lasts six. Dr. Robert Delay. طبعا بتزوسها تقريبا وهنا مريح بدور يقول هذا صورته والزخان هي طبعا بوران كان يخان نيو يا ما بارا مباري وشانا درزي حرارة فرق لك التمبريتشر وطبعا أنواع زوينية اللي هو مش هو هاي كده هي حتى مدرسة زوينية زوينية بويا بلا إيش رأي ورزك هيا وكو معنى علمي بلا بلا معنى لا يعني كش ناسيز تنها تديار ذي كان يدري يشبون وكم تقول كان يتكين Doctor, this is very, thank you very much, very much. A very, very, very nice question. She asked about the magnetic or, or magnetic field of, of, on, on Mars. Uh, so is, is Mars have is gravity on gravity? Or, or it's, it's different than their magnetic fields, she, she asked about that. Okay, well, Mars has gravity, as I said, one-third that of Earth. 
It does not have a global magnetic field on, on Mars. Um, so a compass that tells you which way is north would not work on, on Mars. Dar e Marie, o pusere o mie, parcă ce nu ne-a fi cu ele. Bacurgo, Bacurgo, south, south or north. Bacu, știți că ne vine zi, Marie, mă gândesc să fie parță, parță. Iar în Harșuen, ca ai mă gândesc să zori, veneza, la Hadea și veni zori la Vaza. Mă gândesc cu zăvinie, mă gândesc o Bacurgo, o Bacurgo. Că e mai mare, de ce ziceam că ai nu e băgălat în șanda, da? Thank you, Dr. Robert. Question? Ah, yes. Uh, hello, doctor. Uh, my name is Sia, and I wonder, like, faint movements uh, exist on Mars, on Earth, like the continents are moving. So I wonder, is there uh, faint movements exist on Mars and like other planets? Thank you. Doctor, do you understand the question? Uh, I couldn't hear it. Could you repeat it? Uh, well, the plate movements, like the continents are moving, uh, it's, it, it exists on Earth. Like, is that also on Mars and the other planets? Yeah, she made the, te the tectonic, the tectonic yeah, activity on Mars. Uh, is there a continental drift? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah she, um, asked, she asked me about this. Yes. Uh, I uh, no, there isn't. As a matter of fact, um, the the Earth has of what is called plate tectonics, which uh, makes the continents move. Uh, Mars does not have plate tectonics. Uh, and this is actually a, 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 a pretty important. This is the reason um, why Mars's atmosphere is so thin. You see, uh, on Earth, when it rains, the water comes down and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is dissolved into the water, or some of it is, and the water then goes into the ground and the carbon dioxide reacts with rocks and forms carbonates. But it's not lost because the plate tectonics of the Earth rotate all the material through the heat of the depths of the Earth, and those carbonates are broken down, and the carbon dioxide is released again. On Mars, the early Mars, when Mars was young, it was had a much bigger atmosphere, and it had liquid water. That's why there are dry riverbeds on Mars, and dry lakes, and even a dried up ocean. But Because it doesn't have plate tectonics, when the carbon dioxide got stuck in, in the ground, it stayed there, um, or a lot of it did. And then that caused the planet to cool down and all the water froze. Um, but um, if we go to Mars and we warm the planet, we can drive uh, much of the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, thicken the atmosphere, and make Mars warm and habitable again. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor Robert, today we are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to have a very good time. We are going to او وی که دو که غازه کن همه حبس بیل ناو خانچ مریخ نیه تا در واقع زوی لاره گی برکان که پلیت تکتونی کن درس دوز دکه آو نیه برکان تو تاکید او غازه نیه دیدن نه او همون مریخ حبس با اوش وی بیه برگه هوا کیله دست دار. Okay doctor another question نه دیم ولی شو بس من چطور Uh, doctor, do you understand the question? 
Say it louder, because I, yeah. I couldn't she, hear it. She asked a question, and I know what it is. She said, is that the, the contents of soil of Mars supporting life? Yeah. And Doctor, she said, is the soil of Mars supporting uh, growing plants or something like that in the future? <laughs> Could we grow uh, plants in the soil of Mars? Is that the question? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, uh, we can. Uh, now, uh, some of the soil, before you grew plants in it, you'd have to uh, wet it with liquid water to make certain compounds that are in it uh, that would not be good for plants to, to break down and go away. Uh, others, Martian soil could be used as is. Um, there, people have done experiments in which they grow plants in uh, simulated Martian soil. And in fact, this is something that perhaps uh, an experiment that you could do. Um, you can uh, uh, look in books of the composition of Martian soil and try to create some soil that is like it and grow some plants. خاشي مريض ذكريه حتى اجري امكانيات اللي لمالوا تكوين تكاتي خاشي مريض ديالها بلاو كراكي وكان بس اجري امكان هذه او تجربه شان كبيره خاكي تشوف مريض كان بس كبيره نكشوا هناك بس خاكي جيال وش تعني لنا الشيء الواحد يعني نفس التكاتي خاشي مريض. But you have to grow the plant if you're on Mars. You have to grow it in a heated greenhouse. Yes. That's right. The Khani Shushay greenhouse, the Khani Shushay, the Vidani, as you know, the atmosphere is very zenia, boy, the Mariba, and the greenhouse is the Khani Shushay again. So, if I say that Khachi Marik, I will not shin the Jet. Thank you, Doctor. Question? Doctor Robert, it's okay for you? I'm not, you're not busy or something like that? Can you continue with you? Uh, speak loud. The, the microphone is not as loud as it was. Well, doctor, I said uh, it's OK for you. You're not so busy. Can you continue? Yes, I'd be happy to continue. Thank you very much. OK, we have another question. Hello, doctor. I'm Lucy Hernan Pinti. I'm a um, my question is, is there a day and night on the Mars? If yes, is the time is like Earth or is it different? Was the question, do we have day and night on Mars like Earth? Yeah, it's, she said it's similar with Earth or it's different. Well, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, the Martian day, it, it turns uh, in about 23 hours, uh, 40 minutes. So there's a day and night, and they're just a tiny bit longer than the Earth day and night. Thank you. Uh, I'm in Pisharek in the Doctor, I'll ask you a question. It's from me now. Uh, but I'm saying Kurdish before before I translate it to English to, to you. Pisharek, the Ulama and the Lane and the Mushashis, and the Ria, Kumbale Zarilla, Marik, the Boy, Greenhouse Effect, the Luskenu, and Hibasi Harari, Katismuni, and the Mitsuke, and the Kulizi. Global warming, but I say Zarbain, the Ria, Marik. As I was saying, the Kinzam Ochitale. Dr. Robert, I heard several years ago that there is an idea to uh, bombarding Mars or nuking Mars by nuclear. Hold, Mars. hold the microphone up closer. Okay. It, it's hard to hear. It's okay now? Yes, now. Sorry. Uh, there is an idea I heard several years ago before now. They said that we can nuke Mars, the nuclear weapons, uh, bombarding Mars to make the global warming, you know, the. Is that is that a good idea to to uh, let the water evaporating from the land to this uh, atmosphere? Is that a good way to let the the change in climate uh, change on Mars faster, sooner, faster and faster? Uh, I um I don't I, I've read that paper, um, but I don't think it would work. Uh, you could. If you bombed uh, the south pole of Mars, you could put a lot more CO2 in the atmosphere uh, because there's frozen CO2 there, but it wouldn't last. It would go bad. Um, 
I think if we're going to warm Mars, uh, the way we need to warm Mars is by putting greenhouse gases in Mars's atmosphere. That is, uh, you've probably heard about global warming and the greenhouse effect. Yes. Um, yes. That is warming the Earth really only a tiny bit, but it is warming it. Um, well, there are gamma gases that we could make that are very strong greenhouse gases that really would do a, 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 a good job of, of warming the planet. Now, of course, we don't want to do that on Earth, but on Mars, we do. And so if we set up factories on Mars that manufactured these kinds of gases, they're called fluorocarbon gases, and release them to the atmosphere uh, on purpose, uh, we could warm the planet a lot. ولكنهم <تصفيق> <تصفيق> Dr. Robert, can we continue or? I can continue. Okay. We have a question. Thank you, Dr. We appreciate that. Hello, Dr. My name is Thomas. What's the effect that created in the gravity in the Mars? What's the effect in the, that created in the gravity? Hold the microphone close and speak loud. What is the effect that created in the graft and graft in the Mars? Uh, he said, what's the reason that made the gravity or the force that made gravity on Mars? What is it? It's like Earth... Uh, the, 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 the reason why Mars's gravity is less than Earth is because Mars is smaller. Mars is about half the size of, of the Earth. That is, its diameter is half as big. And so it has less mass, and so it doesn't uh, pull as strong with its gravity. Great. Great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, by the way, just want to add something. Yeah. Because Mars's gravity is one third as much as Earth. Yeah. If you could jump one meter high on Earth, you could jump three meters high on Mars. Yes. My name is Don. I have another question. Uh, what is uh, the biological effect is, uh, or biological changes that happen to humans' body if they leave on Mars? Oh. Dr. Robert? Um, Okay, well, that is an interesting question, um, and no one knows the answer for sure. Um, but uh, when humans um, go into Earth orbit where there is no gravity at all, um, if they don't exercise a lot, they become weaker because they're, they're not, um, they don't get the exercise that you get by walking around on Earth and, and holding up your weight. Um, 
on Mars is one third gravity, and so this effect would not be as extreme. But if you wanted to retain uh, the amount of, of, of muscles and strength that you have now, you, you'd want to make sure you do an extra exercise while you're on Mars. And if you did that, as I said, um, you would be capable of doing amazing things because, for example, if you could jump one meter on Earth, you could jump three meters high I, uh, uh, on Mars. Um, now, what would happen to children born on Mars? Um, unless they sized and, 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 uh, and so forth, they would not grow to be as strong as Earth people. Um, but if they did, they would. And because the basic human um, heredity would stay the same. And, uh, but if they ever went back to Earth, they would find it unpleasant. They would want to know why anyone would want to live on such a high gravity planet. About, uh, she said, why NASA uh, tried to uh, leave on Mars? Do they, are they know that the, there is something bad will happen to Earth? Or the, the end of the world will is closed or something like that? Or it happen in the future? So that's why NASA thinking about rescue or take mass from Earth to the, to the moon to new civilization, to, to the Mars, sorry. Well, there are some people who think that way, who say the reason why we should go to other planets is because, um, as we say in English, you should not put all your eggs in one basket. Um, but that's not my reason. Um, I don't think we are, we, the, the, the reason to go to Mars is to escape the Earth. I think the reason to go to Mars is to create something new. I think that um, uh, it's kind of like uh, having children. Okay, you, you don't uh, have children to try to live forever. You have children to create something new. And uh, in a way, the human settlements on Mars will be like a, a, a child of the civilization of the Earth. And I hope that we have many children. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Robert. My name is Wally. I have a question for you. We know, we know in the Mars, in the Mars is a road, half a road. But I have a question here. The, den the density rock in the Mars is greater or lesser than the air? I have a question. Thank you. Could you repeat it? Yeah, um, yeah, he asked about the density of rocks on Mars. Is it similar like Earth or no? It's different. The density of rocks yes. uh, is similar to Earth. Um, and uh, we have uh, discovered uh, quite a few kinds of rocks on Mars that are the same as rocks on Earth. Uh, but I'm sure we will also discover many that are different. But the density of rocks is comparable. Uh -huh. uh, doctor, I, I have a question. 
I heard about the uh, Spirit or Opportunity Rover, uh, and one of the, uh, their data said, uh, mentioned that the temperature in the uh, regions near the equator are reaching to 32 Celsius. Is that right? Uh, well, uh, uh, it could be. Uh, that's actually uh, new to me. I, I knew the temperatures had sometimes reached 20 Celsius. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, it could be that on a particularly uh, hot day, it could reach 30 Celsius. It's possible. Yes, especially in the summer. That <laughs> indicate uh, the, the, the source, or it was from NASA, said that the temperature was in the middle of the summer. Uh, so that, that reached it to 30, is 30 to 32 Celsius. Right, but only in the middle of the day. Yeah. At night, it gets very cold. Um, I understand that Kurdistan is, is mountains, yeah. um, and so you know that in, in mountains, it can, uh, even in winter, it can sometimes get warm in the daytime, but yes. it gets very cold at night. Yes, sure. Okay? Yeah, Colorado here is also mountains. We have the same kind of thing. Uh, I'm in the Thank you, Doctor. Uh, تقاريرها إذا بتلاقي جميلة لما نبدأ جات السيتا سيدي في السيدي يعني قرب طاق وكو تقريبا مصادر مو استعجل دي أو أو ده احتمال أو قديم دراساتي بيشتري ده بيس درجة يعني أكيد بيس درجة لفايكين لصالح حفتاوشش كوريجر. and by the way I should add that the reason why Kurdistan has mountains is because Kurdistan is in the is because there's less air above you. That's the air above you is a, a blanket. It keeps in warmth. Um, and if you're higher up, there's less of it, and so you That's don't right. have as thick a blanket. Right. And Mars has very thin air, so it has a very thin blanket. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Robert Dele, I'm not sure that I'm going to protect you. 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 Uh, another question, please. Yeah. Hello, I'm Kusar. Has the Mars any effects on the Earth now? Uh, if suddenly Mars destroyed, uh, is there any effect on the Earth now? Um, could you repeat that question? Yeah, uh, he said uh, if Mars, for example, destroyed or get far away from Earth, uh, get out from its orbit and uh, go to the deep of the space, for example. Is that left an, an impact on Earth? Well, um, um, there wouldn't be much of an impact on Earth unless Mars came and hit the Earth and then there'd be a big impact. But Mars is not going to go that. Uh, it, it's not going to leave the solar system and it's not going to hit the Earth. It's it's in its own orbit, and the laws of physics will keep it in that orbit, um, essentially forever. Uh, one question. One question we have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Robert, sorry for, for being late. Uh, she asking you about is that the best way to man to live on Mars is build a, a, a large greenhouse or, or large things, uh, let's say uh, buildings like that. Is that the best way? Uh, well, th that is, is uh, one um, very good way. 
Um, when, when we first go to Mars, uh, we will just live in our spacecraft. They will be our houses and we will live inside of them. If we land a number of them, we could connect them and have more space to live. But once we're able, we would want to build large greenhouses on Mars, um, which could be domes, perhaps 100 meters in diameter, in which there would be uh, living space and plants and you could walk around. And uh, we could also build um, uh, much larger uh, buildings that you could live inside of on, on Mars. Um, but either on the surface or we could create underground um, walls. Uh, ultimately, people, um, when there's enough people on Mars with enough technology, we will start to transform Mars so that uh, the whole planet will be habitable. But in the middle period, certainly we will live in large buildings and greenhouses on Mars. Great. Uh, doctor, we have another question from one of my friends said, uh, sure there is a difference between the, uh, the atmosphere and weather of Mars and Earth. So what is the major points? The Please major hold the microphone yeah, closer. The major, I can't hear it. Oh, sorry. If you don't. The major, the major differences between the Mar Mars and Earth weather. Sure, there is too much, but the major or the most important one is there clouds in the, in the, in the sky of Mars? Check to make sure the microphone is on. <laughs> Can you hear me now, doctor? Now it's better. Okay. Okay, my friend asked you the, the dif differences between the atmosphere of Earth and Mars, and I'm, I'm adding I this. I can't hear you again. Oh, uh, just one minute, please. Is check the microphone, it might be off. Okay, uh, how about how now? It's okay? Uh, doctor, are you hearing me? Dr. Phil? Okay. Microphones like that sometimes have a switch. Yes, it's on, but... Now, uh, um, okay. I can't. I can't hear. Uh, just one moment, please. We try to fix it. So, are you? How about now? A little better. I can okay. speak loud. Okay. It's okay now. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, they ask you about the, the difference between Mars and Earth weather. And I'm adding that for this question. Uh, is there clouds in the skies of Mars? You went off again. Oh, Dr. Robert, can you hear us now? Dr. Robert? Sorry, I can't hear. But can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. What is that? Uh, but I can't hear you. Uh, I can see you, but I can't. Uh, <coughs> Well, then, let me just say a, a final remark, okay. if I may. Okay. Let me just make, make a final remark and you translate it for the, the students. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, well, just two things. Um, number one, I think that science, invention, exploration are the, among the greatest things that people can do. Uh, I think people should do great things. And so uh, I think that Kurds should do these things. Uh, that just in, in the, the process of creating a new and better world through science and invention. Uh, I don't think so, you can hear us. And one more thing, okay, if I may. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, a lot of Americans, like uh, Kurds, because the Kurds have been friends to America, and uh, and I, I also feel that way. But I have an additional reason to like the Kurds, um, which is this: is that. The way I think of America is it's not just a country, it's a cause. And that cause is human freedom. And the enemies of human freedom say freedom is a curse. If people are made free, they will just destroy things. Um, and that is sometimes true, but... Uh, you know, we Americans went into Iraq, we got rid of Saddam Hussein, and we said, now you are free, make of it what you will. And the people in the other parts of Iraq chose to use the opportunity to um, kill and destroy. But the Kurds showed that they could make freedom a blessing, not a curse they showed that our cause is true. And I thank you for that. Uh, well, let's try again. I don't think so. If you can hear me, Doc, Dr. Robert, we are really honored. Thank you so much. I have to uh, talking to you in the language of science, so signing. So I have to say thank you very much. Really, I uh, really appreciate it. We are really honored. And what was that? It's a bit of a bash, you did. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very Keep much. Keep going the way you're going. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very okay. much. It's a great honor. To Goodbye. Have. Goodbye. Uh, my students, my dear students, this is Mr. Dave, my very best friend. As you told about, I told you about him. He's the, the superman. He's the superstar mm -hmm. of this event. So we, I really appreciate for what you do, and uh, I'm sure you will enjoy with this event. So I'm let uh, Dave talk. Let him give him a chance to talk about himself for a little bit. I really appreciate that. Uh, with events like this, what we aim to do is get you guys interested in science and engineering. And that way you guys can build a, a better future. Uh, I myself am a professional engineer in the UK. I'm a former army medic for the, the British Army and uh, I've travelled the world. And I've seen what good people like yourself can do with science engineering. I must admit, I'm actually utterly pleased to see the number of people that have came for today's event. It's uh, breathtaking to see you guys here. Uh, but uh, it's been a long time for myself and Azzy organising this event. And it's just amazing for, for myself to see the number of people here. Uh, <clears throat> but what I want you guys to know is that with the science and engineering, is a large community throughout the, the globe. It's something that you guys would be more than welcome to get involved with. There's many different fields in science and engineering that you, you guys can personally participate in. From astronomy to engineering, which is my favourite subject. And I'm sure Azzy has uh, probably talked a fair bit about uh, astronomy so far, and I hope you guys get involved with that. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, Dave, I have a question for you. Yes, so, uh, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, also, all students here and dear teachers, uh, also the director board here, um, after welcoming you, they, they really want to ask uh, why Kurdistan? What was the reason? What's, what was the impact on you? It's the people of Kurdistan, you guys are fairly well educated and you're ambitious. I want to welcome and people who I work with want you guys to be a part of the science and engineering community. You guys have a lot to give to the world. And what you guys are going through at the moment, we all feel sympathetic to you. The troubles you face at the moment are, are the passing of ignorant minds. And it'll be you guys 
who who will better will come up better at the end. You will build a better world. And the reason that I've picked this place was just that, that you guys inspire people like me. I mean, and I want you guys to know that the greater community in the world is inspired by you guys doing your best at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, my friend Dave. Um, uh, as we talk, talking with you at um, our uh, previous uh, Skype uh, calls, uh, you mentioned about uh, one important thing that probably we can do another project together uh, here or outside uh, Matier Fakhir Mirgastori uh, uh, Educational Compound. Yeah. So yeah. it will be continuing. And uh, do you, uh, are you really like to joining us in, in, in the next future activities? In a future activity, I, I will be across. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Uh, uh, so about uh, our friends, uh, Phil and uh, Robert. Uh, guys here are uh, asking about uh, the questions. They, some of them said probably this question will be primitive or simple. And I hear some really uh, advanced questions. Uh, so one of them asking me a question, it's very fresh, 2014, I didn't hear about that. So I'm, uh, probably this is a surprise because um, I didn't know about the case that she, one of the students talked about. So I'm sure it will be a fantastic event. I'm sure this, this will be a good victory for you. Uh, uh, and I don't know what I say, Dave. I don't know really what I say. This is my it's a pleasure to see all of you people here. I am inspired by the number of people that came up. It's, it's fantastic. And I hope you guys enjoy today. And I hope you ask a lot of questions to Phil and Robert. The 20, one of the students want to say thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Don and I'm 18. I want to thank you that you, uh, we appreciate you that you gave your time to uh, answer our questions and uh, you uh, take care of us as, as a country that fight against, uh, you know that in our situation, we are fighting against I ISIS and we are in a very abnormal situation here. And uh, we, uh, by the name of all of the students, we want to thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, it's my honor. Thank you. And, and as Kurdish people say, Zor Supas, thank you very much. Uh, uh, now, I think uh, the time is close to uh, Dr. Philip, excuse me. Ah. Uh, by the way, the, the study of them are not English. You know, we have schools in Erbil, especially all the program English, but uh, here are all in Kurdish, but uh, they can speak English well, and I'm sure they understand. Uh, they, uh, as they understand you, I'm sure they're understanding Philip and Robert and uh, enjoy and learn more about astronomy, my friend. Don't worry if you're confused with the accent. This, I am Scottish, so. We speak slightly different English. Uh, <laughs> I, I do told them. <laughs> I told them. I told them. I told them that Dave, uh, uh, he's from uh, uh, Northern United Kingdom. Is that right? Yeah. So the yeah. language there is uh, the, the the phonetic there is very different than the uh, uh, Britain or or somebody in England. Uh, Dave, thank you very very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm fantastic. Time. Thank you, and I'm, I'm sure you'll back up in us, and you'll be online. Yeah. If, in case anything happens, just set as an F-16 to <laughs> bombard again. It will be fine. Enjoy yourself, guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you much, very my much. friend. Thank you. We're honored. Thank you. Thank you.